Hey, good morning. Welcome to this members only real quick probate training class. Well, I'm going to introduce you to the probate, how to go get listings, motivated sellers. You've got a new probate system we've created for you and it's rocking. I'm going to show it to you, show you what it looks like, show you how to access it, show you how to use it. But first I'm going to explain to you guys the probate process because not everybody is clear on it. So this webinar is for members of Simple Listing Solutions. And you know, a lot of you have been with us for years and you came on board because you wanted the short sale system and you're not even aware that you've got a farming system that kicks butt in your back office. You got a brand new probate system that kicks butt in your back office. Divorce system and a FISBO system too. But right now we're just going to talk about probate listings and how to go get them using your new tools. Okay, so this is Crystal Data. You guys know me. I'm the founder of Simple Listing Solutions. And let me just walk you through a quick class on probate and how to go get probate listings and what probate listings are. So what the heck is probate? Well, here's a judge saying, hey, the estate must sell the property. You got a house, you got to sell it. Okay, so for you, a real estate agent, I want you to know that probate is simply a process in which a court determines whom to assign responsibility for an estate's assets. All right. And also probate court, ultimately, it, it was designed as a title clearing house for the purpose of collecting taxes. Really, that's what they want. They want tax revenue. Right. But for you, you just need to know that it's a, there's a judge out there saying, hey, I'm going to make Judy Smith the executor of this estate. She's the one that can sign the listing agreement. All right. So let's talk about this because probate, by the way, it's hot right now. And it always is, but it's really hot right now. And what we're seeing in the United States right now, it's the largest transfer of wealth from one generation, the baby boomers, to another, the X gen, right? That's my generation. We're the losers. You know, we're the ones that got the three-year and the five-year adjustable rate mortgages, and we all got hosed. But the baby boomers, they got 30-year fixed mortgages. They paid off their houses. They got a couple properties. <laughs> and People die. When people die, if they did not have their estate in a living trust, and if they didn't keep that living trust updated every couple of years, guess what? When they die, it doesn't matter if they have a will, their property is going to probate. If it's worth $100,000 or more, it's going to probate court. And a judge is going to decide who gets to sell the house. Is it going to be the oldest son, the oldest daughter? Who's, who's going to be responsible? Right? The court will make that determination. And what you need to understand is 95% of estates in America worth $100,000 or more are going through probate court. That means trillions, trillions with a T, right, in real estate. It's just happening every day. You can go down to the probate court for free and pull these leads, right, or you can buy them for cheap. And what you need to understand is that realtors, they're not doing this. The ones that are doing probate, very few of them, and the ones that are working probate, they're not working it very effectively. They send out one or two letters and they quit, right? Sending out one or two letters and quitting, that's kind of like running a 5K. Anybody can run a 5K. I don't even know what a 5K is. That's like a mile and a half, right? Most people, they run a 5K and they're done. They're tired. I quit, right? But if you're a marathon runner, there's no competition up front. Like if you run ultra marathons, there's nobody up there running with you. They all quit back at the 5K mark. Right? So you need to become an endurance ultra athlete right? in terms of follow-up. And we've automated that process for I'm going to show you how it works. But now you know what probate is. All right? And actually, think about probate like this. To a realtor, probate is a free source of motivated seller leads. Think about that. Motivated seller, not buyer, seller leads. And not just seller leads, motivated seller leads. <laughs> and it, the only thing better than a motivated seller lead is a free motivated seller lead. And that's what probate court is. All right. Also, you can kind of think of the probate court as an MLS for your buyer and your investor clients. You're not finding any properties for them. <laughs> go see what you can find down the probate court. Say, hey, go drive by these two, three, four properties. If you see something you like, let me know. I'll get a letter in the mail. All right. And then think about it as a recession proof source of business forever. Because people die during the holidays, they die in the spring, they die in the winter, they die in the fall. And then they do it, and they're going to be doing it forever. People are going to be dying forever, all year, 365 days a year, which means probate business is happening forever. Okay, so why are they motivated sellers? Because they've got attorney fees to pay, right? Uh, Aunt Nellie just died, and the thing's got to go to probate. You need a probate attorney because you want to sell the house. You want to do something with it. we got to get, we got to 
you have the estate, you're going to find out who the executor is going to be, right? So you got to get a probate attorney who's going to file a petition to the court. So there's attorney fees that the siblings or whoever's thinking they're going to be responsible for that property, they've got attorney fees, right? Taxes, funeral and medical bills for Aunt Nellie or the parent who just passed away, estate taxes, right? property maintenance, all kinds of stuff. It's costing them money, right? So they've got a property that just, you know, now it's in their hands and it's costing them money. Oftentimes, like the executor, they live out of state, right? You might have a relative who just passed away in San Diego and you live in North Carolina and you got this house out in San Diego worth $750,000, nothing's owed on it, right? And you got, what are you going to do with it? Besides pay the attorney fees and the taxes and the funeral and medical bills and the estate taxes and maintain the property. You're probably pretty motivated to sell that thing, right? Give me cash. My brothers and sisters are saying, where's my money? Where's my money? They all want their money, right? In the meantime, the bills are adding up. <laughs> That's what makes probate kind of exciting. So how does the probate process work? Well, so your friend Jill comes over and says, hey, my mom just died, and can you sell her house for us? You're going to say no. <laughs> I mean, I'd love to, and I can probably soon, but the first thing you need to do is go pull a property profile. If it's in a living trust and your friend is named as the executor, great. Yeah, sure, you can sign a listing agreement. Let's get the thing sold. But that's probably not going to be the case. Right. probably you're going to say, hey, Jill, you're going to have to go hire a probate attorney, right? And that probate attorney is going to file a petition with the court, right? So the estate of, of Jill's mom hires a probate attorney who's going to file a probate petition to the court, right, asking to make Jill the executor and to give her full authority to sell the house, right? And the day that that attorney files that petition to the court, it becomes public record, which means you could go down to the probate court, you could log on, you could say, hey, look, there's this person named Jill, and she's trying to become the executor of this estate for this property located at, here's the address, here's Jill's name, here's her address. <laughs> wow, that's a pretty hot lead, right? Okay, the next thing that's going to happen after that attorney files a probate petition is that a judge is going to make a decision, right? A judge in California issues letters, right? Some of the states are different, but it's a pretty similar process. Right. The judge is going to make a decision and issue what in California we call letters indicating the court's decision on whom to name as the executor or the personal representative of the estate. In other words, who can sign the listing agreement? Right. Secondarily, the judge is going to say, hey, I give you full authority or limited authority. Full authority means you sell the house, have at it, have a good time. I don't need to hear about it again. You're the, you're the executor, I give you full authority to sell the house. Limited authority means have at it. You're the executor. You can sell the house, but you're going to have to get the offers approved through court, right? Because the court wants to look out for the best interest of the estate. Why? Because the court wants to see the estate get the most amount of money possible because the court's taxes, right? <laughs> Remember, probate court is, is a vehicle for generating tax, right? And why would a judge give limited authority? Well, a judge might give limited authority because the judge might say, hey, this person, attorney that you're trying, you want me to name this person as the executor or the personal representative of the state? Eh, questionable. Like when you, I think that this person might have a, a, a drug or alcohol problem. I think this person might not be a full right mind. I don't think I'm going to give them full authority. I'll give them limited authority. Like you can put the house on the market, but by law, you have to hire a realtor. By law, that realtor cannot charge more than 5%. Right. And by law, you're going to come back here to court at some future date in time and you're going to present the offers to me. Right. And I'm going to ask you, what did you do to sell the house? Did you put it on the MLS? Did you have any open houses? And I'll, I'll, I'll say, yeah, yeah or nay. Right. So the difference between full authority and limited authority is full authority is what you're seeking. Yeah, you have at it. Sell the house, have a good time. Limited authority. Hey, you can still sell the house. It's still a listing. It's going to take a little bit longer to close because you got to go get the court approval. Right now, there's some things you need to be aware of. Like if you're going to say, hey, 2.5% buyer broker commission to any agent who comes along and brings us a buyer, you better state in the MLS that that 2.5% buyer broker commission goes to the buyer broker with the winning bid. Otherwise, you might show up in court and have four people come in and bid on that thing that day, and you're splitting 2.5% four ways. Be aware of that. Right? That's California. I don't know the law in your state, but you may look into that. Okay, but so far all we've said is, hey, when somebody dies, the estate has to hire a probate attorney who's going to go to the court and say, hey, will you make this person the executor and will you give her full authority? 
All right, so let's talk, let's get to the magic here. Full authority, you don't need the court's permission to sell. You're free to negotiate directly with whomever has been designated as the estate's representative, and you can talk them into 20%. Go ahead. There's no limit, right? 6%, 5%, whatever. You make that deal. That's between you and the client, right? Limited authority, in California, the max you can pay, uh, charge is 5% total commission, right? And then you got to get the court's approval on, on any offers that come through. So in a nutshell, that's probate, right? In a nutshell. So here's the magic. An attorney files a petition to the court, and then the court rules, right? But in between the time that the attorney files a petition to the court and 30 days or 40 days later when the court makes their ruling, there's no agent involved yet. Why is there no agent involved? There can't be because there's nobody to sign a listing agreement. I mean, there might be an agent hanging around, but they haven't signed a listing agreement with anybody because they can't. They don't know who can sign that agreement yet. They're waiting for the judge to say, you know, who's the executor, who's the personal representative, who, who am I going to give authorization to sign these listing contracts to? And that's kind of a little magic window, right? So take a look at it like this. Let's say on August 1st, 2014, the attorney files a petition to the court, and then, you know, the following month, 30, 31, 32 days later, the court issues their letters. You've got this sort of red hot zone where there's no agents, right? Doesn't mean they're not getting letters from agents or phone calls. Sometimes the phone number is available. When you go pull up the probate leads down the court, sometimes they got a phone number. You can call. So it doesn't mean they didn't get a phone call. It doesn't mean they didn't get a letter saying, hey, when you're named the executor, when you want to sell your house, blah, blah, blah. That may be happening in there, right? But they haven't signed a listing agreement yet, right? And you need to be aware of that. Now, if you want to get probate listings, your mindset has to be, listen, I'm going to follow up, follow up, follow up, follow up, and I'm going to keep following up, right? The sale, as in anything, always comes in the follow-up. Very rarely do people on the first contact say, okay, you can list my house. Sometimes, and when they do, that's great, right? But if you enter the process with every potential probate prospect, assuming, hey, it's going to take 12 months of sending them a letter once a month, and it doesn't matter because I've got 12 letters, they're all ready to go, then it's not a big deal, right? Then you really just become a letter manager, right? Managing your letter campaign, just making sure your letter gets out every month at the right time, right? And making sure on month three, they're, they're getting the third letter. Not They're not getting letter number one repeated over and over again. So you got to manage those letters, right? When they get sent out, who gets what? That could get a little complicated when you're sending out 20, 30 letters a week, you know, and you're five or six weeks into it or four months into it, you're like, wow, who, what, what letter do I send out? I don't even know what letter they got last. But you guys don't need to worry about that as members of Simple Listing Solutions because we've actually created not only a killer probate system for you, the 12 letters are all laid out. You've got a really cool lead capture squeeze page to drive the probate prospects to. You've also got a new CRM system in your back office that's really simple because you know how simple we like to keep things for managing those letters. So you don't need to worry about what letter, you know, remembering what letter you sent last and when the next one is due. It tells you. You just log into your back office, open up that little CRM. It tells you who got what letter and when they got it and when the next one needs to go out. Okay. So that's pretty cool. So how do you get probate leads? Well, you can purchase them, and I would actually suggest that you do that because driving down to the probate court every week, once or twice, three times a week to get all the newest leads, that, that's time-consuming. It's time-consuming. And you can go purchase probate leads online, right? Do a little bit of research because a lot of people selling them. Poke around a little bit, do your research, right? So you can purchase them online, or you can go down to the probate court, sign in, sit down, and you can search yourself on their computers. Now, here in California, for example, in San Diego, the probate court, it's connected to the family court. That's kind of interesting because you got the divorce listing leads right down the hall, <laughs> right? But you could drive down to 4th Avenue, downtown San Diego, and pay for your parking, you know, and you're going to pay a lot because you're parking downtown San Diego, whatever. You're going to enter the court building. You're going to walk past the sheriffs through their metal detector. You're going to empty your pockets, and then you're going to walk through the metal detector and put your keys and stuff back in your pocket, hop in an elevator, you're going to go upstairs. And then it's going to look like the DMV, sort of, with a lot fewer people. And you're going to walk up to a window, and they're going to say, would you like to look at a probate file? And you're going to say, heck no, I want to look at all the probate files. And they'll say, oh, okay, fill out this little form, show us your driver's license, and then they're going to escort you into a little office in the back where there's computers, and they're going to say, have at it. You know, we close at 
And now you got your notepad, you got your pencil, and you're going to sit down and you're going to start searching for probate with real estate. Right? There's probate deals out there that don't have any real estate and you don't want them. You want probate with real estate. Right. And so you're going to have to teach yourself how to search for those or maybe have somebody in the probate court if you're nice and you bring them donuts and coffee. Maybe they'll help teach you quickly how to search for probate with real estate. Right. But you can teach yourself. It's not rocket science. OK. So that's how you're going to get your probate leads. You're going to go get them yourself. Or you're going to purchase them online. All right. So I'm going to close this right now and I'm going to show you what your probate squeeze pages look like. In fact, we're going to show you the letters, too. But let's just go over here and I'm going to open up, uh, let's look at this one. All right. Get top dollar for your inherited or probate property. Make zero repairs and pay zero commissions. Right. Get a cash offer on your probate property today. And it says what most agents don't know can really hurt you. Warning, most real estate sales agents don't understand the first thing about probate sales. It says traditional sales and probate sales are not at all the same and inexperienced agents will often end up wasting valuable time and creating unnecessary friction arguing with the estate's attorney about unnecessary disclosures. Right? Because with probate deals, you guys don't need to have a transfer disclosure. There's just disclosures that are not required in probate that are required in a normal sale. You just need to be aware of that. That's about it. Right? It says they also aren't trained or equipped to manage estate sales and property cleanouts. Working with an experienced and certified real estate probate advisor like myself almost always saves time and money for the estate. Okay, what am I talking about when I say property cleanouts and, and estate sales? Well, Aunt Nellie died and she left a bunch of couches, furniture, TV, the house is full of stuff, right? And the family, they're scattered all over the U.S. They don't live there, right? And they said, hey, you're going to sell our house. You can do an estate sale. You can say, what a value add. Listen, I'll do an estate sale for the for the estate to net the estate as much money as possible. I'm going to charge a fee for that. I'll earn a commission on everything I sell. You know, sometimes these probate properties are like a boat in the garage, like an old Fiat, you know, convertible parked in the garage. You don't know. You get in there and you can manage the estate sale. You can charge commissions on that stuff and you can make money there, too. But that really helps facilitate the process for the executor and, and the siblings and everybody else around that. Oh, really? You'll, you'll clean and you'll do a clean out and get the property ready for the market? Yeah. So you can offer to do an estate sale, sell all the stuff, send the, you know, get to net as much money as possible for the estate. And you can say, hey, whatever's left over, I can donate it to, to Father Joe's or to Amvets or to Goodwill. I can get all this stuff out of here. Or if you'd like, we can box it up and ship it back to you. You know, you guys will make that determination and I'll get the house cleaned up and ready to put on the market. That's a phenomenal value add, right, for the estate. And it's also an additional way to make revenue. Okay, so it says, I provide two options for selling your probated property. Option number one, you can sell to one of my investors for all cash and a fast 21-day escrow. It says, with this scenario, you'll make uh, you'll pay zero real estate commissions and make zero repairs. Right? I got an investor. They're going to give you 25%, 30% below market. They'll pay my commission. Don't worry about that. And they're not going to require any repairs because they're paying 30% below market. Right? We'll handle that. And we'll do a fast 21 day escrow all cash. Now, if you don't have investors, you, they're not hard to go find. Call a couple busy realtors in your city and say, hey, I got, you know, I got an investor. You know, it's not hard to find an investor who will pay 30% below market for a house in most markets. Okay. Option number two, it says, is I'll find you a highly qualified retail buyer who will pay top dollar, right? Retail price for the estate's property. It says allow 30 to 60 days in the current market conditions. Maybe it's not 30 to 60 days in your current market. That's okay. You can edit this page very easily and change that, right? You guys know you don't have to have the HTML programmers to edit these pages. It's really simple, right? It says in most cases, you can expect an additional 25% to 35% more money when selling this route. Even after all of the seller's fees are paid, including real estate commissions and other closing costs, contact me directly on my mobile phone right here. Send me a message in the box above including the property address, and I'll provide you with both prices on the property so you'll know which option is best for the estate situation. What do you mean both prices? Remember the investor price and the retail price. All right. And then down here, it says, use my bullseye report below to learn the current retail value for your property, which is typically 25% to 35% higher than investor cash offers. Right. Well, okay. So here's your lead capture. All right. And so this page positions you, positions you as the probate expert, right? And it's your lead capture. Now let's log back into the back office. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to log into an agent back office. 
and we'll just go to this one right here. All right, and I'm going to scroll right down here to the letter library, and I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to scroll past the short sale letters, the farm letters, the expired letters, letters for your center of influence, letters to divorce prospects. And we're going to get down here to these probate letters. you got a 12-month campaign right here, one letter a month. It's already done. It's already done. Let's open up probate letter number one. And we're just waiting patiently for letter number one to open. And it's a Word document that you can edit. You're going to have to edit it because it's a template, right? You're going to have to put in their name, the file number, your signature. But the letter is done. Okay? So let's look at this first letter. I'm going to click Enable Editing. Now I'm in this Word document. So you're going to have to put in their, their name because their name is probably not John Doe, right? And then you'll put in their street address, city, state, zip, regarding the estate of you know, John Andrew Doe case file, right? And then you're going to have the date. And this first letter says, Dear Mr. Doe, I'd like to begin by offering my sincere condolences for the loss of your loved one. It makes my letter feel a bit awkward. However, since I believe I can help the estate, I also feel I must try. My name is Joe Realtor. You're going to have to change that unless your name is Joe Realtor. It says, and I specialize in probate and inheritance property sales and purchases in San Diego County. I'm writing you this letter because I'm currently representing a group of investors who've purchased several homes in the neighborhood around the property located at. You can put in the property address. It says, I'd like to arrange a time to preview the property if you're considering selling it. I can typically provide a full cash offer within 48 to 72 hours of my preview and close escrow within 21 days. It says, when you sell to one of my investors, you'll make zero repairs and pay zero real estate agent commissions. If you have an interest in selling this property, please contact me right away on my mobile phone. Put in your phone number. Send me an email at boom. And there's your signature. And then P.S. You can learn more about my probate services and resources at, you know, your URL, www.myprobatesite.info. All right. So that's letter number one. And now remember, you got letter two, three, four, five, six. You got a whole year's worth of letter. You're going to drip on them every 30 days. But remember, if you send it to a bunch of people all the time, you're going to get pretty quickly confused. That's why you've got this little link down here that says Lead Center Manage Your Letter Prospects, Lead Center Send Letters. Right? So I can click on Send Letters. Actually, let's back up. I can come down here and I can click on uh, Manage My Letter Prospects. Right. And I could say add, I don't have any back here yet, but I could say add a letter prospect. I can click on that. So I'll put in their first name, John Doe, you know, John Doe, I'll put in the address and then letter name probate, start date, put in the date, day interval. I'm going to say 30, right? Letter count. I'm going to say 12. And then if I have any information like, Hey, they like to ride bikes and they're from da, 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 da. I can make some notes to myself in here and I can just click submit. When I do that, Right. Once I put in my first prospect and what letter campaign they're on and how many days the interval is and how many letters need to go out, once I've done that, um, then what will happen is when I click on this other link called Send Letters, it, that, that prospect will show up right here and it'll tell me what letter needs to go out next and what day. Right. So it's an easy, simple way to manage my letters to my, pro, my probate prospects or divorce or short sale or fizz, whoever you're mailing to. This is a very simple way to manage your letters. OK, so you all have this new probate system. It's in your back office, It's in your back office. And if you have further questions about setting your own system up and getting your letters out of the mail, you know how to contact me and I'm on your team and I'm just waiting to help. All right. So go to work. You guys, there's probate people out there waiting. You can list their house and you could you could make the next 12 months your best 12 months either and just start yourself a whole new brand new real estate career around probate. Right, making it really easy for you. All right, that's it. Bye.